title of the report is UFOs and Defense, What Must We Prepare For? Now it's 92 pages of text after that title. The Cometa Group received data collected by numerous scientific agencies. Much of its content was based on reports from military and civilian pilots. This official document was an internal military investigation that was never intended for the general public. The report also contains a selection of photographs. These photos were subjected to scientific analysis in an effort to determine authenticity. Cometa also examined physical evidence, such as plant and soil samples taken from alleged landing sites. One such case occurred on January 8, 1981, in southern France. There was only a single witness to that event. Uh, he was working in his uh, small farm. Late one afternoon, he heard a whistling sound. He looked up, and just above the trees was this strange craft. It descended and landed 30 feet away in his garden. Mm -hmm. He told his wife about it in the evening, and she thought that he was joking. They went back in the morning to look at the area, and they found traces on the ground. The scientists came out in uh, a week or two and they took further uh, samples of soils. They also took samples of plants and the analysis of the soil and plants were very interesting. They were carried out quite professionally and uh, there was evidence of uh, compression of the soil and there was a clear evidence of damage to the plants the kind of injury that could happen because of heating, due to microwaves, for instance. So there was good physical evidence in that case, and moreover, there were two kinds of physical evidence, injury, damage to the soil, and damage to the plants. Despite the physical evidence, the small town of trans en provence labeled the farmer as a flying saucer fanatic. I can't say a number of cases analyzed by the Cometa Group came from military pilots involved in UFO incidents. One of the most dramatic cases occurred in September of 1976, when a Phantom F-4 jet flown by a pilot from the Iranian Royal Air Force attempted to fire a missile at a UFO. In the same instant, the pilot's fire control console and radio went dead. At this point, a smaller craft emerged from the main UFO and circled around the jet. The pilot then took evasive action and power to his controls returned. He escaped unharmed. In this report, they say, in effect, UFOs are real. Ergo, the extraterrestrial hypothesis may in some cases be the best or only real answer and cannot be ignored. They are technological. They do things that we probably can't do. And all that being said, this obviously constitutes a major concern for global defense and security. The actual UFO, uh, from the time it was first seen by Rod Dickinson, who did the filming, uh, it lasted approximately 12 minutes, so it was uh, quite a long period of time for a daylight sighting to occur. We took this tape to be analyzed by Lucasfilm's Special Effects Division, Industrial Light and Magic, in San Rafael, California. Here we met with Bill George, an Academy Award-winning visual effects supervisor. Over the last 20 years, his special effects have been featured in films like Star Wars, The Phantom Menace. 
the optical zoom certainly would. He analyzed this footage to determine its authenticity. But there are several things that I see when the footage is running that, that tells me this was actually there when this was filmed. First of all, it's the shake. Okay. The shake. If, if you were to give me a background plate of just the sky and say, we want you to take this image of a flying saucer and match it in, that's something that's technically very difficult to do because you would have to match, putting the two elements together, you would have to match the shake. Now, certainly we have computers that can track that, but this is just, this is all over the map. A couple other cues that tell me that this is actually there when it was being filmed was that it's going in and out of focus with the background because the camera is trying to compensate and trying to focus, it's probably have some sort of autofocus. So the background is going in and out of focus along with the object. There are these dark things flying through frame, and if someone was to have to put that in there, they would have to composite it in behind the birds. It's a, it would be a technical problem. Bill George couldn't say it was a real UFO, but he could confirm for us the that the object was so not added in later. Given those clues, I'm convinced that this object was there when this person was, was taping. In 1968, the UFO subject was being debated at the highest levels of government. The debate was triggered by a major sighting over the state of Michigan. And I could see the light on either side. And then the red light was sort of casting a glow over the whole thing, so it looked like a round disc. When it got to the top of the trees, it stopped. And a, a blue and a white light come on it. Good evening. Walter Cronkite reported the incident on CBS. Residents of the area saw it. The police saw it. Sergeant Newell Schneider of the sheriff's office remembered it well enough to draw it. What do you think it was? Well, if they call it a flying saucer, that's what it is. The Air Force sent its consultant, Alan Hynek, in to review uh, what had been going on. And Hynek, uh, after about one or two days on the field, had to face a big press conference. He said, well, I don't know what was going on. It may have been marsh gas. A little bit of swamp light appears here. It goes out. Another one appears over here. That goes out then. And, but the, the illusion as viewed from a distance is that the objects have moved back and forth. The public was absolutely uh, furious and the press kind of made fun of it. And uh, Congressman Ford of Michigan uh, thought that he would take action and he called for public hearings by the Armed Services Committee. This matter should be brought from the... In a recent exclusive telephone interview, President Ford confirmed his involvement in the investigation. I undoubtedly wrote Chairman Mendel Rivers of the Committee on Armed Services that such an investigation be taken. Congress heard testimony from a number of witnesses. Former Marine Corps Major Donald Kehoe asserted that there was far more to UFOs than swamp gas. In fact, the Air Force at one time had a top secret estimate that these things were interplanetary spaceships. To date, we have over 10,000 cases at Wright Patterson Air Force Base, of which 646 of these remain unidentified. The Air Force has been accused from time to time of hiding information about UFO. What do you have to say to that, Colonel Patrick? Well, these charges are absolutely untrue. The Air Force continued to maintain that it was hiding nothing. And we've always honored accredited media when they wanted to investigate a given specific sighting. There's nothing to hide. There's nothing to hide at all. Now, this is not an attack on the Air Force spokesman or the project spokesman. They are simply following orders to explain away all UFO sightings as quickly as possible when they become public and deny that UFOs really exist. 